am indeed in game. So hey guys, thanks for joining us. I am Rapid and with me is Frank and we will be uh, commentating game two of the NESL Premier League season three. This will be a game today between these guys. This will be Barry's Bananas and you see a Barry Banana is going to be playing his uh, signature Morgana and by signature Morgana I mean he actually plays a whole lot of Twitch but this time around he's going to be rolling mid Morgana <laughs> and they will be going up against Team Lazura and this is definitely going to be kind of the pros versus the bros as uh, Barry's Bananas are all you know 15 1600s whereas uh, pretty much everyone 2000 ELO for Team Lazura. Atomic's actually going to catch the entire team here and by he's catching them I believe they they are actually going to catch him. I I don't. He he walked into their entire jungle and now he's like, uh, how how do I get out of this one? Oh, there is the flash, oh. but an instantaneous stun there by Atomic. The trolls cannot stop. They just keep going. <laughs> he runs through their entire team. He even jukes the Morgana Dark Binding. Atomic, how do you do this? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my lord. This is going on Potato Monster 100% of the time. This is ridiculous, and it looks like the Jester might get caught out here. This could actually be pretty bad. No, it's not. She's just going to run away. And this is hilarious. Wow, what a pro start to this game. And if this is any indication that uh, Barry's Bananas is going to get outplayed here, but here we go. Talandra actually getting in there a little bit ahead of himself. Um, but uh, that gives Jester the opportunity to get some poke off here. No heals coming out on other, either side right now, but wow, wow, wee, wow, this is going to get a little bit crazy here. And Lazura, for the first time that I've ever seen, might get actually counter jungled here. Man, and yeah, big, uh, big, 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 large, huge is actually going to be in there. Atomic this time around will not be so lucky and will finally get picked off there. So first blood for Lee Sin, that's going to give him a really, really great opportunity here. He's got a lot of ways that he can go about this, and he is going to just go ahead and steal this blue, probably leave one of those lizards. No, he's going to opt to take one of those lizards. And now Amumu, and this is a great idea here though, you always want to counter jungle the Amumu. And the, actually the fact that Atomic got caught out there, I think just changed how ag how aggressive they were going to be on this jungle as you can see here things now normalizing but digester down at bottom lane it's going to be up against a vain alisar which is really really brutal stuff when especially when you're the only one in lane and he's going to get as much poke as he possibly can off here on these two guys but uh and actually he's trading really really well with this vein yeah, Vayne actually getting bursted down there to an, about 100 health, and I'm not sure that's exactly what she saw coming there. Atomic just doesn't really like stopping the forward motion of his character. It just keeps going, and even from that beginning, he just walked all the way into their jungle and then miraculously got ahead, only to die a few minutes later. Uh, top lane, it's going to be a bulwarked Galio versus a turtle stance Talandra, and so all those spell shields are going to be pretty effective at negating a whole lot of damage. Ted Sickles is actually running around there and actually is it going to try to get the blue buff here but uh, does not look like he's gonna be able to he's gonna actually find Stevie Starfruit in the jungle and uh, now that Lee Sin is following will he be able to catch him no he's just gonna loop around here and maybe try for a gank here mid lane yeah I don't know how well this is gonna work out though he did pick up a second blue buff kind of silly if you had to ask me um, he definitely wanted to take that away from the Amumu, but he could have given it to Morgana, and there he goes in for the gank, but with the pool, of course, trolling his way away from that one is going to be, uh, slushy here on, on Vladimir. One thing to note is the fact that, uh, I definitely think that they should switch their mid and top lane characters here for Team Berry Banana. Uh, Galio would do, actually, down to bottom lane, I missed that one, but it was a kill there. On to Vayne, and I, I kind of saw that coming, though, from the way that Vayne exchanged with Misfortune early on. Definitely think that was the way to go there, and actually, Digester still having one potion available. Um, I would have expected him to use all of those at this point, but if you switch Galio with Morgana, Morgana's going to do a lot better against the Uder than the Galio will, and uh, Galio will do better against the Vladimir than Morgana will, so I definitely think that it would be in their better interest to go for this one. As you can see here, uh, D7777 is going to be pushed up here against this turret as Talandra definitely loves this lane matchup with that Tiger Stance and Galio with the Magic Resist. Not going to be very helpful here. Alright, so mid lane it's going to be Barry's Bananas, uh, Barry Banana going up against Slushy and when you're Morgana and you're getting pushed to your turret, 
There might be something wrong, but oh my goodness, bottom lane again. It looks like a non-stop aggression. Digester getting burst down below half health. And uh, top lane even, Galio going down to sub-50 health. He and went down so, at 9. Oh my goodness. And just <laughs> barely, barely able to flash out of there. So a really good job staying alive, but uh, that's just going to give Talandra complete dominance. And then once top lane starts snowballing, it gets really rough, really fast. Failed gank middle lane there by Stevie Starfruit onto Slushy. So Slushy's just been doing a really good job at avoiding a lot of those ganks. And he really picked a really good champion to do that. He's got that pool which dodges Dark Bindings and uh, dodges a lot of uh, you know Stevie Starfruit stuff. And uh, when you're mid lane, you're probably going to be able to make it back to your turret. He did opt for Flash instead of a Ghost, which is something you've been seeing a lot of uh, you know modern day Vladimir's pickup just because it does allow you to cover so much distance while invulnerable in your uh, in your pool. So we're going to see if that's uh, if that's going to be uh, effective and if one of these Lee Sin ganks is going to blow that. Uh, Talandra did go back top lane, so that's going to give D777 a little bit of a chance to uh, go ahead and pick up some extra farm. But uh, at once Talandra wards, it's going to be uh, really, really uh, sad here for Galio is he's not going to be able to get any help from uh, from his jungler. Yeah, and you can see the the rails is excuse me going to be the build here for Talandra. He's definitely going to want to um, use that to sustain. And holy crap, that tiger stance! One shot takes off more than I think. Uh, 150 Barry health Banana there. is not looking too good. Will go down there to the Q from Slushy after a counter initiate. Dead Sickles is actually taking a lot of damage here. And will Stevie Starfruit actually continue the aggression as Slushy and Stead, Ted Stickles, almost said Stead Tickles, are uh, both ridiculously low. But uh, it looks like it's not going to be enough aggression. Uh, what happened there was Galio went in on Slushy. And then Slushy popped down his ult, ran back away, made sure he was going to live through the ignite, and then turned around as Ted Sickles came in for a perfect counter gank. Actually, there is the pool there. Will this be enough? The exhaust is down, but with the ignite and the Amumu landing an excellent tether, Slushy will actually live through that entire engagement and pick up another kill to make it three to one in favor of Lazura. And there it is, yeah, and you do not want to fed Vladimir. And here we go, top lane as well. Uder is just gonna apply that pressure like crazy so much damage coming out with that tiger stance yet again and it looks like the blue buff might actually go to uh vlad here for those cooldowns i think at early level vlad loves it um no it looks like he is just gonna opt to help out there as amumu is going to be taking that as he's the one who kind of needs it with that mana but a uh, little reset there on the golem, and that's going to give Ted Sickles a little bit of problems here. But we'll take that one out very handily, and Vladimir is going to have to work his way back. Does he have enough for the revolver? Yeah, no. not to mention the amplifying tome, the ward, and the potion. Um, so he's going to be doing quite well there, and uh, up at top lane. Very low mana, Galio, and um, definitely getting worked over here by Talandra on Uder. Yeah, Talandra's just having himself a good time, having a ball, and I don't really think Galia is going to be able to stop him anytime soon. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I still hold to the fact that definitely Morgana should go top lane. She's got the range. She's going to be able to, to farm very, very well against this Uder, and uh, she's, she's going to be able to uh, spell shield the stuns that would come out for him as well, not to mention Galio against Vladimir. Just... So, so much better of a matchup there. Down a bottom lane, though, you've got some action coming in here onto the vein, and here we go. Lots of damage coming out there. The double up, unfortunately, not being enough there, and Digester's actually going to work his way around here. As Amumu has been spotted coming in through that brush, though um, he's really not going to be able to get anything done here unless um, Digester pushes this one down right to the tower here, and you can see with the help of Atomic even auto-attacking because they know how quickly they want to get to this tower. Um, is Amumu going to be get, able to get in there and Digester unfortunately not taking the shot that she could have onto that Alistar, but still a lot of pressure going down on that bottom lane as Vayne was forced to go back and now Lee Sin forced to defend as well. Yeah, you really don't want a tower dive in Alistar. Those don't tend to go too well as he does have really, really effective CC. Uh, Pool actually used there from Slushy and uh, that was just because Morgana popped her ult and then uh, you know he didn't want anything to do with that, just pools it, runs away, and uh, then makes it all the way back to turret. Talandra's actually a lower health than DT777, but uh, it's really about that effective health, and with Turtle Sands, it, you know, Udyr's never really that low, although he will go back and probably start to, start to pick up his uh, wriggles. 
And you can see here, Galio is actually doing the right thing, just auto-attacking as much as he can without missing CS. And he's just going to push this wave down, hopefully to get these creeps to the turret. But um, I don't think... Uh, actually, he is going to get there. So that's going to be some minions lost there for that Uder. But down bottom lane, there's a ton of action here as the ultimate from uh, from Vladimir goes off and is, is going to pick up that kill. Though Lee Sin, with the Amumu here in the fray, is going to be uh, trying to get off as much damage as he can. Amumu with the bandage toss about to come out, I have to assume... There we go with the E coming out there from uh, Vladimir. Going to be healing himself up a little bit and doing some damage to those champions. And that's going to be one dead bottom lane turret. And that's what they need to be doing here is pushing those lanes down. Top lane, more pressure coming out here. And oh god, that tiger stance. Jesus lord, in comes the tower dive as well. He needs to switch the tiger one more time. There's the pop and he's definitely going to pick up that kill um, with that DOT from the ignite and the tiger stance. Just absolutely ridiculous damage. Yeah, a really good job doing the combos. You saw Udyr actually walked past Galio and then started auto-attacking him just so he would be able to get that last auto off. And then he just made that decision, pushed the button, decided to go for the turret dive, had his ignite up, and picked up that kill. Tons of people converging around bottom lane after that uh, initial uh, tower dive. It like, oh, looks like Slushy is going to go down here. Oh, the fail flash actually leaves him alive, but Stevie Starford is going to pick up the kill after landing his Q. So that's going to be a little bit of something here for Barry's Bananas and uh, definitely helping them out in that regard. So Talandra may be winning his lane, but I definitely think that Lee Sin is a little bit ahead in the jungle. And in fact, if we go ahead and check out last hits, we do see 36 to Amumu's 39. So actually, Amumu is caught up in the jungle and has go double gold per fives running. So that's really going to make up a lot of the difference not having that extra kill that Lee Sin does have. Yeah, one thing you want to do as Lee Sin, if you're going to be, uh, or as any Riggles jungler the, uh, against a gold gen jungler, such as Maokai or Amumu, um, you really want to set up aggressive situations on the dragon. Um, if you're gonna ha if you're gonna have that extra damage and the quickness on Dragon that Amumu d and you know Malphite or whatever those tanky junglers don't have, uh, actually before I finish that thought, top lane it looks like both ultimates going down here on Talandra and he's gonna try to get away here, but with that smite and the Q being landed there with the red buff as well, it looks like CV Starfruit with the red buff tick is gonna go down. But like I was mentioning, you definitely want to be aggressive on that Dragon because you're gonna be able to take it down so much faster. Though it looks like Amumu getting uh, catching the. Uh, Lee Sin here, and I don't think he's going to have enough mana left here to pick up this kill. Unfortunately, he uses his ultimate on one character. Um, usually when you do that, especially as a Mumu, you, you really are expecting to get that kill. So he's going to be in here very aggressively <laughs> taking these creeps, and I think a Galio would be in the right state of mind here to just completely go after him with yep. full mana. But and Slushy is coming over here, and uh, with Buried Banana waiting there, I'm not sure that's going to be enough. It looks like, oh my goodness, Lee Sin dropping really low, but bottom lane looks like, uh, wow, Big Big Large Huge will go down there to a Digester, and now he's going to jump in here onto Grand Sky Doom. The stun comes off, and the strut is engaged, but no, he's going to get auto by minions. It cancels the strut, but will that be enough to pick up the kill? Yes, the oh. double up! Max range double up will jump to Alistar, picking up the kill. Yeah, that was sick, and you know, that really goes to show how comfortable uh, Digester is with MF. I don't think he. Re I think he realized that he wasn't gonna get in range without taking too many tower shots. So using that Q, perfect timing, picks up that kill. And top lane, it looks like Talandra going for yet another kill onto Galio. It does so much damage there yet again, and he's gonna have to. Um, he's gonna have to tower dive here if he wants this kill, and I don't think he's gonna be too uncomfortable with that. As you can see here, Galio not too comfortable in going in here, and he loops around. It's so funny to watch Uders. Um, just auto attack and then loop around a little bit, auto attack again, make it look like he's still hitting the turret. But here we go, Tiger Stance goes in there with the Ignite and boom, down he goes. That was a hilarious skill to watch. You know, Barry Banana is going to come in here, but even though he's going to try to get the gank off, Udyr has more health. And oh man, a clutch dark fighting. There goes the ult, there goes the Ignite, and this could be a dead Talandra. But then, oom, Barry Banana is not going to be able to pick up the kill with auto attacks. And we could see, actually, things oh. turn around. The pool is not on, and actually, that will be another kill for Talandra, picking that up on top of Morgana, who just did not have the mana or the cooldowns to sustain through that. And excellent job picking up that kill to make it three to nine in favor of Lazura. Yeah, absolutely sick stuff there. Um, and really unfortunate, I was waiting for the pool to come down there from Morgana and it just didn't happen. Actually mid lane here, it looks like uh, CV Starfruit definitely gonna go down here with the ultimate as well ticking. Um, unfortunately though, Ted Stickle's getting picked up there 
by the Alistar, on taking that tower aggro, not working out so well for him, but mid tower is going to go down here, and that's going to be some nice, a nice gold advantage there for Team Lazura as well, or stacking onto the one that they already have, as they are now um, roughly 6,000 gold, the advantage here. And I think Dragon's certainly something that they should be going for as soon as Amumu gets back up here. Lee Sin is down as well, but uh, that, that Dragon definitely going to be... Uh, something to put them well, well ahead in this game. Yeah, the Jester just does not care about this vein. He's like, oh, you have more AD, oh, you have more health. I, 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 what, I, I have a BF sword. So he actually <laughs> has a pickaxe as well, and with 185 attack damage, almost 100 attack damage more, that's going to be trades that he's going to be winning all day long but with cb starfruit and grand sky doom converging on bottom lane the jester is going to have to build up his strut to maximum effectiveness to be able to get out of this one but he does see the queue coming from cb starfruit sees the jungler coming with that ward near the double golems and will be able to uh, get out of that situation alive meanwhile top lane big surprise going in favor of talandra who wins this lane quite handily as now galio is going mid and slushy could get picked down here he is going to pop the ignite and with so many heals coming out from Tarek, we will see Galio get picked up there, but now CB Starfruit is here on to Atomic, but Amumu's gonna come in there, oh. pops the ult, Very Banana will go down there as well, Grand Sky Doom is dropping really low here, does he have his ult available? Yes, he does, will he actually pop it? No, he doesn't pop his ult there, and I'm a little bit confused about that, Slushy is diving even farther past the second mid turret, and uh, actually, that will allow CB Starfruit to get a back to base successfully, but Big McLarge huge gets charged so hard by Slushy and actually the heal coming off will it be enough yes it will as Big McLaren huge survives but CB Starfruit may not be so lucky it looks like 10 singles will go down but that will be the kill on Vayne as well so oh my goodness so many crazy dives and shenanigans but that is eventually a one for I believe it was one for three yeah, I think that that was the number to come out there as t uh, Ted Stickles was the only one to go down. And like I said before, once Ted Stickles came up, he definitely should have won for Dragon, but there was so much action happening in mid lane, and ooh, I actually thought that was a Dark Binding, but it was just a tower shot. As he is going to be laughing now, but not laughing for very long, as it looks like the pool is going to come out here, uh, and Slushy's probably going to get picked off here, um, going a little bit too low for his own liking, but wow, these guys... Uh, just too many skill shots here, and not really able to hit him, but does get picked off there by the uh, Morgana. Uh, Slush is a little bit mad that his sexy, sexy micro was not effective enough at getting him out of that situation. He sustained for so long just because Morgana did not want to, uh, or did not actually have her ult available, so they were both doing as much as they possibly could to uh, survive there and also to pick up the kill as Vladimir who is just ridiculously effective at sustaining through basically everything. There comes down the stun. Will we see Talandra carry down the feeds from top lane onto this middle lane? No, he's Dodging skill shots right and left. Oh my goodness, 10 singles misses that clutch. Uh, you know, bandage toss over the wall. Will Barry's bananas fall down here? Amumu is on top of him, but a dark biting will save Barry Banana for a little bit longer. The black shield goes <laughs> off at exactly the wrong moment, and that will result in a kill there on Morgana. Yeah, that was kind of brutal, but you know, great job there for <laughs> from Atomic, who is now going to be double buffed and. Um, I still have to hold here that that dragon should have been on their minds a little bit earlier on here. Now I think we're at a point where the Jester can probably solo the Baron. Um, and uh oh, here we go. Galio ult, big one coming in there onto Amumu and Talandra here on Uter. Amumu is going to have to be forced to run away here, but with those two tower shots, he will get picked up there. And Alistar, having done the last damage there, is going to be able to uh, pick up that kill. So. You know, Barry's Banana is somehow finding a way to get these guys into a bad position, and I definitely think that uh, Lazura needs to pick, hike up their pants here and do a little bit better job than what they're doing. Really, really sloppy stuff, but another engagement off to the side here, and it looks like Vlad will be picking up yet another kill here. All right, but Atomic is going to drop down there, and that's going to leave Slushy 1v4 right now. Will he be able to get out? His pool has a 10-second cooldown. Now, Lee Sin is going to jump onto him, but will the Jester's presence be enough? 
too. I just heard them. No, did Jester just get popped there instantaneously by the Morgana ult? Stevie Starroot is chasing Slushy. Slushy has an excellent zone right there and is just uh, using all of his uh, 300 or uh, 405 move speed to just uh, you know position himself. Uh, the best way that he possibly can and uh, is actually still in lane going to sustain off of all of these minions and probably will be able to get up to above half health which is a little bit more than uh, you know CB Starfruit can say he's walking on top of a ward will this mean that Slushy wants to go in for the kill Black Shield is up and that will save CB Starfruit for now but Slushy just does not care he doesn't stop he keeps going and uh, like the Energizer Bunny does not uh, pretty much care about anything he's full clearing waves to lauders there as well and uh, there's not a whole lot that Lazura is afraid of right now although that should probably change here as uh, you know it's only a seven kill difference it's not like it's something huge and catastrophic like uh, you know a 10,000 gold advantage the gold advantage is actually at, at about 11,000 gold so you know this is what happens when I speak before looking at how exactly dire the situation <laughs> is it is zero turrets to five but atomic signal get caught there by a dark binding the ignite goes off Bane and Alistar are jumping on top of him. There comes down the ult, but Tarek will most certainly go down there, allowing Big McLarge Huge to get even uh, more... Uh uh, what's another large word to use? He used pretty much all of them in his name. Be that as it may, Big Big Large Huge will ult here, and with Vayne the Night Hunter chasing onto Ted Stickles. Ted's gonna sacrifice himself for the good of the cause, and by the good of the cause, I mean picking up one kill. Do they pick up the second? No. Vayne decides to spell them off of those minions, but uh, it looks like we will not have any OP purple caster minions. Ted Stickles gets caught there and will get blown up there by the Galio. Grand McSky Doomy die guy thing will go down there, but actually. The uh, heal saving uh, Big Big Large Hughes' life as uh, Vayne does make it out of the situation alive. So many crazy shenanigans, but that was a two for three, so still in favor of Team Lazura. Big Big Large Hughes was probably supposed to go down there in the grand scheme of things, but actually cheated death, survived, and uh, made it out of there alive. So that's going to leave them with a four and three Vayne, who already has Bloodthirster Zeal. And uh, looking for her Berserker Greaves coming up next. Also has a Null Magic Mantle floating around there for some odd reason. And we'll see what he opts to build that into. But a two-man Baron attempt between Slushy and Taladra. Massive spell vamp from both people. And oh my goodness, could this be a two-man Baron? Yes, CLG status. The Baron does go down. And uh, that was a uh, two-majority... Uh, people, but Satama coming in there for the assistance at the very last minute, and that will be the first Baron of the game going down at 21 minutes for Team Lazura. Atomic's rolling around the back. Will Big McLarge Huge actually go down here? He does not have his ult available. Actually, yes, he does. The exhaust goes out. Will we actually see it use? He turns invisible for a split second. Will he get out of here alive? And uh, yes, it looks like he will. The headbutt over the wall is good, and Big McLarge Huge is going to turn around here and pick up the kill there on Atomic. Yeah, meanwhile, mid lane, it looks like uh, we've got uh, Vladimir pushing in there, picking up the Galio well, well underneath that inhibitor, or behind that inhibitor. And here we go, it looks like Slushy will be pooling underneath the Q from the from the Lee Sin, and it looks like there will a lot of damage coming out here. Is he going to be able to sustain himself? Wow, he does a lot of damage, and down he goes. Mm. Unfortunately, I'm not picking up a kill in its wake because of the fact that his ultimate was down. And it looks like, you know, continuing the trend of going for not full team global objectives here, the Jester will be coming down here and picking up the Dragon by himself. And uh, a really, really split up team here for Team Lazura, as you've got three characters in different lanes, and then the rest of them are dead. So... Um, off they go, and then the red buff will have to be taken here as a lot of pings. I had to assume that they would be in Skype, but apparently not here as now uh, the Jester will be looping this red buff around as much as possible. Could have been caught out here by this brush with uh, Ted Stickles a little bit off to the side there, but opts to go over that way anyways, and uh, is going to walk away with that one just fine. Uh, really, uh, you know, like like you said, uh, not a lot of team coordination here. Usually, uh, Lazura is really known for exactly how well they mesh together as a team. You know, they've only been a team for a few months now, but uh, not so much this time around. Will Grand Sky Doom go down? No, so much damage mitigation. Actually, 60% on that ult will get him out of there alive. So he's going to make it out and not, uh, not get picked off there by the Jester, who just does so much damage. Has Infedge and Zeal completed... Uh, with uh, Berserker Greaves Vamp Scepter, and that is an extremely potent build, especially against people who don't really have that much armor built. You know, uh, the Zhonyas is on the way from Morgana, but other than that, there's just not a whole lot of armor items built. 
Yeah, and wow, uh, two, two skill shots there coming out, getting pulled there by Slushy, as he does do quite a bit of damage to that tower. So in they go, it looks like this is going to be the push here. Potentially that could end the game as if the fight goes well for them. Here comes Amumu getting in there with the bandage toss, and does use his E to great effect as well. And here we go, Vladimir Olive now taking away on three people. Some excellent healing going to be done there when that pops. Even better ultimate there from uh, Misfortune. I think that's the combo that we um, unfortunately missed talking about in the early game is the Misfortune and Amumu ultimates coming out at the same time. Really, really tough to deal with here as this um, is going to come into the very, very late stages of this game as two inhibitors are looking like they're going to get picked off here, though. Talandra down at bottom lane is going to have to use his turtle stance there to make sure that he doesn't get picked off there by that tower as mid lane and bot lane both have their inhibitors completely picked off and slushy now healing off of um off of lee sin who is on the summoner platform yeah you're just using lee sin as a battery transferring that health through his veins a little bit like a uh, transfusion there if you will as that is the name of that skill so much you see going out onto slushy dodges skill shot with his q pops the zonias and that's going to give the rest of berries that is time to converge around his soon to be three dead body actually pool comes off of cooldown and he's just trolling so much now he will finally go down there before actually picking up you know something crazy like a kill but uh Majai's is the pickup for Tarek. Uh, does not have any stacks yet, but uh, if it does, he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Happens a Death Fire's Grasp complete. Not something you see out of your everyday Tarek, but he's definitely going to be doing as much work as he can. Yep, and uh, that's definitely a late, late in the Jais, but regardless, I think he feels comfortable enough that he can walk around with that sucker and hopefully get some stacks on it. And, you know, with the Death Fire Grasp, that's, that's definitely going to pair up very, very well for him. Um, what else do we got going on around here? Uh, nothing too much. The gold advantage is now at 19,000. A little bit silly there, a little bit too high, I think, for uh, Team Berry's Bananas to come back from. Although, we've seen from last game that this could certainly go their way over the next couple of minutes here as Talandra and Ted Stickles looking to 2v3 this one. And it actually might work out as Atomic steps into the fray here and Morgana does get slammed. Yeah, Crucian, she goes down before the last take of her ult is uh, picked up there. Actually, Alistar headbutting Atomic away, but he will finally go down there as well. And that is one for one. But, uh, you know, losing Morgana is a lot worse than losing Tarek uh, by a lot of, uh, you know, by a large margin. Dead Signals and uh, Talandra are going to jump in here on Big Week Large Hughes, but as Slushy is here now as well, the flash oh, wow. over and the ult from Ted Signals. So much damage being done there, and now Slushy and Talandra are going to loop around oh. here. The Banshee's now actually stopping the ult from Vlad, but with so much damage from that Tiger stance, Talandra will pick up the kill there on Galio. Misfortune does not stop. She really wants. Grand Sky Doom, will she get the sloth? No, he's gonna make it back to turret. But speaking of turrets, that's going to be at one and more, making it nine to zero here for Team Lazura, who have not actually lost a single turret this entire game. Yeah, I'm, uh, oh, excuse me. I'm going around the map here looking at what the turrets are at, and uh, things are definitely going very, very well for Team Lazura as they're not even close to losing a turret. A single turret, and uh, the Jester stepping onto the spawning pool turret. They're actually taking way too much damage. As three characters are now down here for Team Berry's Bananas, and the uh, Nexus has been exposed. Exposed, and it looks like the creeps are going to do enough damage to pick this one off. Though with Talandra dying there as well, um, I don't know if Vane's no Vane's not going to be able to do this fast enough. Um, although it's actually not looking too too bad here. Uh, for, as far as defending this goes, but Atomic will be focused firing down that Nexus. Definitely a smart play on his part, but the ultimate from Galio, not going to be enough there as well. And uh, there we go, so the Nexus will get picked off, and that's two games uh, in this best of three going to Team Lazura here. So I definitely think if we can cover more games for these guys, they have a really stacked bracket. So hopefully we can get some great coverage there as... Uh, you know, we mentioned in the beginning of the last cast, there are so many great teams there. And, uh, you know, Lazur does take this one down. So hopefully they'll make it out of the group stages of this tournament. 
Yeah, so thanks for every to everybody for watching Frank's new Twitch.tv stream at uh, Twitch.tv slash uh, P-H-R-A-N-K-O-M-M-E-N-T-A-R-I-E-S. And uh, if you want to go check him out, follow him on Twitter at uh, one Frank. If you want to check me out on Twitter, it's at Rabbit Transit 24/7. Go ahead and uh, follow his uh, his stream and uh, you know check us out as we continue to commentate lots more League of Legends action. So thanks for stopping by to uh, everyone, and uh, I guess that's all for uh, for this series of games. So uh, thanks for watching, guys.